Hey Legends, what's up? It's Darkmech here from Big Dumb Gaming and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a review video around a topic that I see flying around a lot and that is I want to get into streaming, I want to get into content creation, what microphone, what camera should I be getting? So the Legends over at Razer AN Dragon Ball Z sent me what I would basically describe as a beginner's bundle. Uh, and I'm going to give my thoughts around those today, and that is the Razer Kyo X and the Razer Siren V2X, which are both entry-level webcam and microphones to the streaming and content creation uh, world, if you just want to have a go. Now, full-off disclaimer, Razer sent me the products for free, right? I use them, I get to make a video on them. I have no obligations to Razer to give a good review, okay? They they don't care. It's really cool about working with Razer is the fact that they send me the stuff and then I just get to be as honest as I want to be. So when you're watching this, don't think that I have a, a list of dot points that I have to cover off to make the products look good. I'm using them. I'm using them to make the video that we're watching and listening to right now. And I'm just going to give you my honest thoughts around them. I think a big problem with people when they go to get into streaming is they go to their favorite content creators page, they look at their gear list, and then they think, right, I need a Go XLR, I need a Shure SM7B, I need a Cloud Lifter. When the reality is that those streamers probably started off on gear exactly like this, I know I did, and then as you built up your audience, as you built up your, your income from that source, you then started to invest it back into those things. I think a, a really big mistake people think is that, or, or make, sorry, is that they think gear is going to make their stream. You're going to make your stream. You're going to make it shit or you're going to make it good. The gear is only going to enhance the way it sounds and the way it looks. So now that I've shoved all that in your face, let's get into it and have a look at the products. So we're going to start off with the Razer Kyo X webcam. Now, retail-wise, you'll find these in Australia for around $139 AUD. Retail-wise in the US, you're looking at around $79.99. The webcam features, as listed on the box, is full HD streaming capability, uh, 1080p at 30fps, 720p at 60fps, a wide-angle view, auto-focused, fully customizable video settings, flexible mount options, compact and portable, and of course, the one that we like about these for beginners, plug and play. So let's talk about all that. It's not 4K. The reality is, who fucking cares? You're not streaming in 4K anyway, so that's really not an issue for you. In regards to the 1080p at 30fps and not being at 60fps, which you will see on a lot more cameras nowadays, if you are planning to use this camera for full stream, uh, streaming, full screen streaming recordings, this would be your go-to. Um, though, if that was the focus point of your content, I would suggest not even getting a webcam, and I would get something like you know a Sony A6100, 6300, 6400, or whatever, and a cam link. And, and using that, that's not really what these are designed for, um, especially at this price point and entry level to the market anyway. But as a little webcam in the corner while you are gaming, there is absolutely no issue whatsoever for that. As I mentioned, if your main attraction is you playing the game and you're a webcam in the corner... Uh, and you're just providing the entertainment that way. Your 720p at 60 FPS is absolutely fine. So is your 1080 at 30 FPS. Keep in mind, you know, when you are a webcam that small in the corner, it gets really hard to pick up on the subtle differences anyway when you are that small. Full screen is a different story, but when you're in the corner, it's not really an issue. Uh, looking at Razer Synapsis, you can fully control the camera via this. So Razer has started to build all of their software runs through Razer Synapse, obviously. Um, and pretty much through this, there are a number of settings that you can muck around with. So looking at this at the moment, there are three different preset uh, controls that you've got cool, vibrant, and warm. And then you've got this fully customization feature where you can go through and start changing things as much as you want. In regards to the multiple mount options, kind of what you would expect from webcams, most of them come with these these days. You've got a monitor one, which you can put over the top of your monitor, which I'm using at the moment. You've got a desk one, where you can pretty much change the angle of it on the desk. And then you can take off the bottom and you can screw it onto a tripod, which again, it's pretty stock on most webcams nowadays. 
Final thoughts around the webcam. Uh, from a price-wise, it's really decent bang for buck. It's cheap, it's plug and play, you can customize it, it does the job. Webcams in the streaming world, kind of in a tricky spot at the moment. Uh, a lot of more people now using GoPros, uh, their phones, webcam, and, and an app. Um, actual cameras with cam links becoming more of a thing. They're becoming more affordable. The desire for webcams is diminishing in that aspect. Um, but if you want to try it out for content creation, I think this is a really good option just in regards to your money. You're only going to be forking out, you know, like $140 in Australia for a webcam, you know, which to give a go provides really quite a decent picture. And you can see from here, I haven't changed anything. This is in default settings at the moment. Um, I've got my studio lights on, so I haven't changed that. If I turn the studio lights off, you can see like how, how you know, it's, it's a lot darker in here. Picture quality though is still quite crisp and not actually any problems. From a focus point of view, you can see my hand, you know, there's a fair bit of blur when it goes across that. But focus wise uh, on the camera, the audio the auto focus is actually quite decent. It does a lot of work and it does it quite, you know, it does it quite well. Turning the lights back on, you can see the difference that makes. You can see I get this real whitewashed, like my forehead isn't this giant white billboard. This is like a real thing that comes with webcams though, where you get this real white washed, uh, white washed uh, sort of look on your skin tone. Um, but again, for price wise, it's it's just really not it's not a bad option. And furthermore, if I put this on top of a game, which I'll show right now and I'll edit this in, you can see you know, these differences become when when it's full screen versus when it's in the corner become a lot less noticeable in regards to that. And like I said, if you're starting out in this space, you don't need to spend big bucks. This is absolutely fine. All right, so the Siren V2X, retail-wise, you'll find this for about $169.95 in Australia, uh, or retail-wise, $99.99 in the US of A. Uh, microphone features as listed, USB microphone, plug and play, super cardioid pickup pattern, analog gain limiter to prevent vocal distortion, a gain control and mute button on the microphone, the mount has a built-in shock absorption to dampen desk noise and mic monitoring if you wanted to be able to listen to yourself to how you are sounding through the microphone. So, really sturdy microphone straight off the brat. It's brushed metal. It's nice, it's solid. It's got a swivel on the bottom so you can change the angle of it. No real complaints there. It's, it's, quite, it's quite neat and small. Cool features, but there's a few buts to that. And we're going to get to them. So we're going to start off at the top. It's USB. It's plug and play. There's zero complaints about that whatsoever. Much like with the web, uh, webcam, you plug it in. Razer finds it in the software. You can navigate everything through Synapse. Cool beans. Regardless if you like Synapse or not, it's still better than IQ. Uh, so, can't complain about that side of it. It has a super cardioid pickup pattern. That's great, mate. The fuck is that? All right, so... A super cardioid microphone uh, is a very directional pickup pattern, basically. It's most sensitive to where the microphone points is the easiest way to think about it. And it's got null points where it won't pick up at 127 degrees and 233 degrees. It has a rear lobe sensitivity on it. So basically what that means is that there will be a pocket behind the microphone where it picks up sound as well. Super cardioid are generally good streaming microphones due to the fact that they have high directionality so you can point the microphone at where you want the sound to come or where you want the sound to be going into the microphone basically. However, if you don't want to put this uh, mic on a shock mount or a boom arm, you might encounter some issues, uh, especially in your positioning of where you put this microphone if you are playing games or doing other things that involve noises. So. Right now, as I'm making this video, I have the microphone sitting on my desk between me and my keyboard. The microphone is in the space between us. Now, I use a Razer Huntsman V2 linear switch optical keyboard. It's really quiet. I really like it in comparison to uh, something like the uh, the Corsair OptiSwitch ones. I find are a little bit clickier. Uh, same as the Logitech G95, I want to say, or something like that. Again, found it louder than the Huntsman V2, and I like quiet keyboards generally, and I like optical switches. So, 
I've got the keyboard in this position and now I'm just going to start tapping on my keyboard, right? And you can hear that the rear lobe on the back of this microphone starts picking up those sounds. And that's because there's a pocket behind that supercardioid pattern that actually picks up that sound. So if I have my keyboard in this position where I'm talking to you, which is, you know, it's a comfortable position, it's easy to do, you will get some of those sounds coming through, which could be really annoying to you. Now, I'm just going to delete because I've obviously got notes here. I'm just going to delete all that crap from my notes. So you have to start playing around with where you put the microphone. And I actually found the best placement for me with the microphone was off to the left side of my desk. Uh, if I still wanted to use the desk mount, uh, basically where the corner of my wrist rest is off to the left. So I'm just going to move the microphone over there now. Okay. So I'm just going to put this cord over here. So I've moved the microphone. It's, it's kind of off to the left now. Now you can still hear me quite easily. I just make sure the microphone's kind of angled. Um, another problem with these microphones as well, guys, is if you've got anybody else in a room space with you and you know, people are coming indoors, uh, the TVs on or something like that. These microphones, if in any, if in any of that range, will absolutely pick it up and rain it through. That's where you can start using things uh, like in OBS, like noise gates and things like that to try and reduce it. But it is something worth knowing with these kind of microphones. So I've changed the position of this microphone now. It's basically in the left corner of my. Uh, it's on the left corner of my keyboard where the wrist rest is, as I said, um, and. Because it's not, um, you know, something like a Shure SM7B, you don't have to talk directly into it to get that sound. It can sit away. And, and this is pretty much what it sounds like now. If I'm tapping on the keyboard and I'm talking to you. So it's still there. It's just less because that rear lobe isn't facing directly into it and picking up on the sound. A lot of people move away from using the desk mounts um, and they'll put them on boom arms. And I'll stick them up in the corners. Um, you know, reason being is to try and get away from their keyboard sound or their, you know, their desk taps and things like that. And what I mean by desk taps is like, Now, as I said, because it's a super cardioid pattern, it's going to pick up those sounds anyway. And again, that's where, you know, noise gates and, and filters and things like that can come into it, lowering the microphone's volume. Um, but in regards to leaving it on the desk, you are just going to be exposed to some of those things. There's not really um, a lot that you're going to be able to do about that. And that's why people try and mount them up, get them out of the way. The mic has an analog gain limiter on it. Now, basically this will apply like a dynamic range compression when it's turned on. Um, you simply do this by going into the Razer software Synapse uh, and it's on the microphone page. So super simple to turn on and turn off. When it's on, it will take your input signals. It'll evaluate them. If the peaks or volume exceeds the set threshold, it'll automatically lower them, reducing distortion basically. So it's a really nice feature. And I will show you this turning it on and off here. So if I go into my Razer Synapse, I go to the streaming tab, I go to microphone, and you can see there's an analog gain limiter here that I can turn on and off. This is what it sounds like when it's on. And I'm gonna hold the microphone right up to my mouth here, redlining the shit out of it. And you can hear what it sounds like. Now, if I turn this off, and I start talking into it like this, you can hear the difference it makes in that. Now, keep in mind it's not absolutely perfect, but for a USB plug and play microphone, this sounds like utter garbage. Whereas if I turn it on, it certainly makes a bit of a difference and makes it sound better. Okay, so that's now your understanding of analog gain limiter. Okay, the mic comes with a mute button on the microphone itself. Green means it's go time and red means it's not go time. It's nice, it's simple, it's visually easy. I don't mind that. The shock absorption mount. 
I'm not really too sure what to tell you about this. There's only so much that a desk mount is going to be able to do for you and this is absolutely no difference. I think it's just a nice thing to put on a box realistically as, as I spoke about with this super cardioid pattern, it's going to pick up all the sound in the room anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so desk bumps, desk taps, everything like that, it picks up anyway. If I take the microphone off the desk, so there would be no need for shock absorption, it, 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 it all still comes through anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so doesn't, do, doesn't do much. Don't, don't, don't buy the microphone and tell people that it's got a super shock absorption mount on it because they'll just look at you and go, uh, Alright, on to one of actually maybe the coolest things that comes with this microphone and that is mixing software. Now a lot of streamers that you will go and watch content creators and all that kind of stuff use mixers for their audio and the most popular one probably is the Go XLR for this very purpose. It allows you to control your music, your discord, your microphone volume, uh, your system volume, your game audio, the works. It's nice, it's easy. The appeal about a Go XLR is that you can do it on sliders right in front of you and it's very easy to do. Elgato did this with Wavelink and you can control it via a Stream Deck, which makes it again, extremely uh, simple. It's a lot less expensive than a Go XLR as well, obviously. And now Razer's finally jumped on board this with Stream Mixer, which you'll find built into your Razer Synapse software. However, there are a few issues with it. One is that not all the sliders actually sync up. For example, there is this volume switch right here on the microphone. Turns the volume up and down on the microphone. That's cool. However, it doesn't reflect it in the control tab in streaming on the microphone when I wind that knob, actually nothing happens in here. And it should all be doing the same thing as it's controlling the same application, which is volume. So that's a little bit odd. And that might just be something that's like, you know, a bit of a software bug that comes out with a fix and then it's okay. But at the moment, that seems like it's still present. And I actually went and had a look at a couple of other videos that this was still a thing. And that was um, back in October, I think. You can add up to nine inputs on this. So game, music, system, sound effects, um, which is really cool. So this is really great. It's a really nice feature to see brands starting to bring it on board to these types of uh, instruments like USB plug-in microphones because it, 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 it removes the need for really expensive equipment if all you want to do is use this to have some fun and have a go and, and as an introductory. So this is really good. I'm happy to say that the link feature works from what I've tested out here. Uh, I did see it was doing nothing on some older videos, but now when I was playing around with this today, the input on the microphone um, for output and monitoring, I was able to link them up, drag them up and down and get the effect on that. It was working as exactly as intended. Um, I really do hate though that this is a drag and drop slider. I hate that it doesn't work on the fly as you just drag it up, you get instant feedback uh, effects from that. You have to drag, drop, and do it in increments to kind of get, you know, the desired effect of what's actually changing. So don't really like that. I would really like to see um, either some hardware come out from Razer and be able to control this on the fly, much like, you know, a Go XLR with sliders, Elgato's got the stream deck with their Wavelink, um, or even just some shortcuts coming onto their keyboards would be really great through Synapses to be able to start controlling this. Um, I think that would be much better than having to click into Synapse and having to sort of control it on sliders via your mouse if you were trying to do things on the fly quickly. Um, definitely not a deal breaker, but it's, you know, it's just an improvement that I would like to see. So final thoughts uh, around the microphone. For a starter microphone, I, I think it's really good. I, I don't think I can say many bad things about the microphone for what it costs and what you get, you know, like, like I said, $169 in Australia or 100 bucks in the US, it, it's really not bad for a plug and play microphone that sounds like this. Um, 
you know, I've done the whole video on this microphone and I do not think it sounds bad. It's not an obtrusive looking microphone at all as well. So it's, if you wanted to mount it and you didn't want it in your webcam or if you wanted it sitting, you know, as I said, there are obvious problems if you're sitting at where I've got it right now. If you are going to be playing on your keyboard with that pocket behind it, picking up keyboard sound off to the left for me wasn't bad. You will certainly find a spot on your desk that is nice. But otherwise, if you want to mount it out of the way and you don't want it in your webcam, you know, you don't want this you don't want this microphone sticking out of the side and things like that. It's a nice small microphone where you can kind of hide it out of view in that way. Um, and it'll pick up from quite a bit of distance back. Like I'm sitting in front of it now, but if I, if I was to scoot all the way back out here, you can still hear my voice coming through this microphone quite well. And that's because of that pattern it has on it. Um, so you can move it a fair way away and it will still pick up quite nicely for you. Um, as I mentioned, it's plug and play. You don't have to be an audio whiz. You don't have to watch a hundred YouTube videos to set it up, which is a huge bonus, especially in the beginner space of things. We want things to be easy, friendly, you know, to get into, not stressful and hard. Um, the new stream mixer software I think is a really welcome tool to have. It just needs to be ironed out a little bit more. Um, it is in a good state at the moment, but there's certainly improvements that can be made around it, um, functionality-wise and quality of life, which will really see that software start to continue to lift Razer as to being a really, really solid brand in this space. And they're really taking that uh, content creator space seriously, um, which is great to see. So hopefully we, we see further improvements pushing out from that. Um, but overall, guys, for, for, for this kind of bundle for a webcam, and microphone to start you out, the KOX uh, and the Siren V2X. I, I think they're great. I think they're really, really solid products for if you just want to get in and have a go. Get my thumbs up. I've made the whole video on them so you can see what they look like and what they sound. Any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you to Razer ANZ for this opportunity. Uh, and I'll see you all next time, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.